Are you ready to think big and act bold? Then you are in the right place. This is Innovative Entrepreneurs, a podcast that will bring you the stories, insights, and tips from some of the most successful and innovative entrepreneurs in the world. I am your host, Erica Bailey, and I am here to help you start, scale, and sustain your own entrepreneurial journey. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to kind of be raw and real, and we're going to talk about adversity. We're going to talk about adversity in the workplace um, and how you can push through and change that to uh, more positive engagements. And we're going to talk about adversity in personal lives. And this can relate to um, employees, to business owners, to you know, C-level execs, to entrepreneurs, pretty much anyone, because we all face adversity in our lives. It's, I mean, it's a fact. We all face adversity in our lives. So what is adversity? What is the definition? What does it mean? I think we all may have an idea of what it means, but adversity is literally difficulties or misfortune. Those are the words in the dictionary. So we're going to talk about the workplace. For example, um, you have a bereavement leave or you have, you know, a maternity leave and you come back to <clears throat> new staff or new team members. You come back to a desk full of work, which makes you feel overwhelmed. You come back to, uh, you know, team leaders or bosses who are angry and who are, you know, pushing everything on you and, and causing you strain and, and distress. You know, that's just one example. But adversity at work happens all the time. It happens with, you know, your team members, employees, bosses. If you aren't able to work, you don't get paid. But if you aren't there during a very difficult time or a very special time, you miss out on those moments. And what an internal battle he must be feeling. There's also, you know, adversity between employees and employers, uh, HR and employees. These are battles that, that happen every, every day in the workplace. So here's some types of adversity you might deal with at work. Physical adversity, such as arrangements, roadblocks, mental challenges, like having to deal with different personality types, which conflict and you don't have a syn synchronicity. So you got no flow. Emotional adversity, like handling criticism and other kinds of feedback. Those words are harsh. The goal is to have a conversation that is kind and we can communicate without being cruel. So if there's something that needs to be changed, if we address it with, with kindness, you can change the whole tone of your workplace. I mean, simply by being kind. There's social challenges at work, uh, building and maintaining relationships that can be hard. Again, that can make you feel unworthy, sad. I think this is the one that, that we really need to work on because sometimes it can be a punch in the gut and this is financial hardship. Accounting errors, budget restrictions, loss of income. Here's a couple of ways that you can deal with adversity at work. So number one, prepare for multiple outcomes. All right. Understanding what could happen at each point. You know what I mean? So if there's three different possibilities for a conversation to go, prepare for each of them. That way, when you are confronted with either possibility, you are able to come at it with preparedness. You are prepared and that helps get through the conversation and the feeling of unworthiness or, you know, not good enough that goes away. So really think of the best and the worst case scenario. And a lot of the times, the worst case scenario is not as bad as you may think. I recently had to build a support network. I was traveling for a personal reason for almost four weeks. And I thought I was going to be able to work. I got all my equipment, brought, you know, got my cameras and my lights and my mics and everything I needed to do my podcasts and do my work. And I probably sat at that desk 20 hours out of the month. I couldn't do it. There were so many things that were piling up on me. 
a lot of those emotions that, that we talked about, or I talked about earlier, you know, suffering, um, distress, heartache, setback, trauma. And when you have those feelings, it's, it's a challenge. But I have the most amazing team and they would let me know what's happening every day. Um, they would take care of our clients. I didn't have to worry. My support network was there for work. And, you know, being a business owner, the responsibility for their income is on me. So I was so scared that I was going to drop the ball and things were going to happen that, you know, caused issues with our clients because I just couldn't, I couldn't. And they picked up the slack. So having that support network is phenomenal, whether it's in your business community or it's your family or it's a group of friends, but that's another way that you can push yourself through these feelings of adversity. Follow a role model. I I follow Michael Russ. He's got a book called Zero Adversity. I will drop the link in the show notes. And I also watch Gary V. Um, I can never say his last name. This is my role model. And again, it's all started with kindness. And I also have um, a third one who is Mike Aguilero. And of, of course, I probably butchered that. He's my personal and professional development coach. And he helps me lift through those emotions. What I've learned for both business and personal is you have to feel the feels. That's my new thing to say, but you have to feel the feels. You have to see them, hear them, touch them, feel the feels. And then you got to just 15 minutes, sit there and go through what you have to go through for those 15 minutes and then get up and get back to work or get back to your family. You have the strength and the power to push through. It's a choice. So like Mike said, I have a choice to be miserable and just completely distraught and overcome with adversity during this personal time. Or I can choose to smile. I can choose to love. I can choose to focus on the memories that just brought me so much joy. And it was just this quick turnaround, just this quick turnaround. So if you have somebody who can help you or who you, you can follow or appreciate that lives by these zero adversity models, hang on to them is it helps. It really helps. And a lot of this I've been talking about is mindset, right? You want to change your mindset. How you tell it can affect how you feel about it. So if you are telling it as I am miserable in my job, you will feel miserable in your job, right? But try switching up your language a little bit. Focus on the positive. Have some self-reflection, maybe some self-resilience, positive thinking, but really it's about mindset. You can choose to be hurt. You can choose to be angry or you can choose to recognize those feelings are there, respect them, say thank you and let them go. It's mindset. Use adversity as an opportunity for growth. This is a way for you to focus on how this adversity makes you feel, right? And reflect on what you expect to happen. If you change your mindset, how did that change your expectations? How did that change your feelings? Do you feel like you're more in control, right? Reflect on it. Otherwise, you're not going to see that you are making progress and it feels damn good to make progress, right? Um, confidence. Yeah, that's always a big one. There's a difference between having confidence and having self worth. Confidence is I can go out in front of people. I can talk on stage. I feel good about myself. You know, I dress well. I speak well. And self-worth is I am valued and I feel value. I know that I am providing value and love and light. So, you know, that's the difference between self-confidence and self-worth. You can look it up. There's so much more about it. And really consider how this challenge can help you. How can you turn it into a positive? But it starts with the confidence to make the decision to do it. And if you are so used to living in this space of these adversities, um, it's hard. It's hard because you are so comfortable. And so when you're faced with an adversity, you're just like, whatever. 
But if you start to change your mindset, you can face this adversity and deal with it, learn from it, and grow from it, right? Um, you want to view these challenges as an opportunity. And again, that's that mindset change, and it's not going to happen overnight. But if you continuously train yourself and train your mind and you write things down and you have sticky notes all over and you have kitty posters or whatever it is you need, but view these challenges as a opportunity, you know, consider again what this can teach you. Skills that help you change um, these these feelings or help you turn them around is a sense of humor is really going to be the number one. It builds confidence and it just brings value and love and light, which I say all the time, but to, to others around you. Um, critical thinking. Uh, you know, when you can approach adversity logically um, and developing that those critical thinking skills. You can again see what's going to happen here, here, and here and say, okay, I am ready for all of those. And you're prepared. So if you're thinking logically and you're, you're putting it on paper and you're, you're ready to face because you know what's coming, you know, that's a good thing. Communication. Right. If you are having a spat with somebody at work, find a way to communicate where you are speaking your truth and not swallowing your emotions. Okay. And I do this all the time. When I have a hard time, like speaking my truth with grace and ease, when I feel stuck because I feel like I can't get my words out. A lot of the times what it is, is I'm choking on my emotions. So I have to work through that. So being able to communicate your truth is important, but you also have to remember you need to listen to. So communication is key. Start with listening. Listen to listen, not to make or not to come back with a response. Don't even think about what your response is going to be until the person's done talking. Just listen. Um, that will help the communication. And patience. Challenges require patience. This allows you to avoid making mistakes or doing things that you wouldn't have normally done. It allows you to realize your inner strength, right? Um, it allows you to go through, recognize your thoughts, hold on to them for 15 minutes, say thank you, let them go. Like you need the time to process that. So have patience with yourself and it allow you to develop that mindfulness and yet being able to honor your mindset and honor your truth. So, wow, that was a lot. And then I'll quickly tell you about personal adversities and how they can really impact your life as a business owner. By the way, before I get into this personal part of my adversities, I'd like to say thank you to Mark, who is our podcast director. He puts manager, but he's the director. Um, he takes care of all of this stuff for us. I make sure that it's done properly and that my message is shared and those who I speak with, um, that their message is shared. So great job, Mark. Appreciate you. Um, you're an important part of the team. So personal adversities. Um, my father has been sick for about nine months since he had cancer. And I had gone to visit about three weeks at a time. And it was really hard for me to focus on work. It's not just that, you know, I was surrounded by the sorrow and the sickness and the quiet and, but more so I couldn't put my thoughts together, you know? And so when you're not able to put your thoughts together, it makes it very challenging to provide valuable services to people. I mean, luckily again, that I have my amazing team and I have some of the most phenomenal um, clients, but I, I really call them partners, but they're clients. So I was able to get through those. But this time I get there and, and I have all my gear. So I have my lights. I have my podcast mic. I have my that light, um, you know, everything that I need. Heavy bag. <laughs> um, I set it all up and I didn't do anything with it. I probably worked maybe 10, 15 hours over the three and a half weeks. Now, a week of that was, you know, helping my father in his preparation for passing, transition, whatever you want to call it. And I just couldn't focus. So we all have moments like this and we have to get through them. It's, it's hard. Everybody handles 
death and grieving differently. But for me personally, it was important to bring my light out. It was important for me to take the positivity and hold on to those moments, even in the moments of grief and sorrow. And I was able to turn that mindset around and I brought value to my family. I didn't bring much value to my clients, but they understood. And that what personal adversity is. Now I'm a business owner and I have a great team, but what about what about those who, you know, are are ten ninety nine? The struggles that ad- adversities can can cause are are real. So I gave you some examples of what adversity looks like and what adversity sounds like. And I gave you some examples on what you can do when you are experiencing adversity. And I hope you got value because that's really my intention. Thank you for joining me. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I know everybody asks that. So by the time you know what you do. So if you want to, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, you can find me kind of all over the place. Um, Innovate Entrepreneurs. Business by Bailey, CWG Digital, which is, by the way, my um, marketing and design studio. I own this company with my husband. We've been doing it for 15 years. We can do everything from business cards to, you know, six-figure portal developments. So we love to work with clients that we can bring value to. So you're welcome to check us out. So don't forget to get um, Mike's book. It's called Zero Adversity and it's, it's quite interesting. It's quite helpful. I'll put the links down there. So again, thank you. I appreciate you for listening. I'm grateful and I do hope I bring you value. Namaste. Wow. What a great episode. I hope you had as much fun as I did. If you want more of this goodness, make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications for future podcasts. And if you found value from this, please share it with others. You can visit our website at cwgdigital.com. This is Erica Bailey. I am your host, and I will see you next time.